Hi, one of the queries uh, I got uh, uh, from uh, viewers uh, who tried using uh, PyPG is uh, uh, they want to use uh, a dedicated uh, uh, port uh, to send packets uh, and uh, uh, there is also a scenario like uh, uh, sometimes these uh, packet generators uh, sometimes you may uh, feel you need to disable um, you know the ports IP address and stuff because if you enable uh, what happens is uh, it may send any DNS packets and uh, various things like that. So, in fact, you can do like that. Okay, what I suggest is uh, you can use uh, one uh, USB to uh, Ethernet adapter like this. See, this one I got quite long back. Uh, uh, this is a USB 3.0 uh, gigabit Ethernet adapter. Uh, the time I purchased it is quite expensive because it is quite fairly new to the market but these days you get quite uh, such adapters quite cheap. In fact, if you go to Amazon, uh, you will find uh, such adapters. One thing I suggested uh, for my students as well because uh, they were building their home lab and stuff. Uh, I told them uh, don't get this 100 MB uh, variants. Okay, you will get it at a fairly low price. Okay, USB to Ethernet adapter. See, you search and then you get all this uh, generic ones. Uh, uh, you can see there some are 400 rupees and uh, stuff. See most of them even uh, a model like this even I have uh, this is just a 100 Mbps uh, uh, you know Ethernet adapter so it is quite cheaper. Uh, if you need it for a lab like scenario it is still fine uh, you can get couple of them. I always suggest you can buy some 2-3 of these but uh, if you are quite serious and if you are working on advanced uh, networking projects uh, try avoiding this type of uh, you know network adapter see this one is just 100 mbps versus if you need it uh, uh, gigabit uh, ethernet adapter it will be around uh, 1k or so right so this one yeah this one is a gigabit uh, adapter from tp link uh, you can uh, consider buying something like that versus this okay 700 bucks and this is around 1000 uh, bucks so, get something like this. Uh, what you can do is you can inf in fact uh, uh, buy a couple of these. <laughs> okay, uh, it will be quite useful uh, for any network uh, experiments. Uh, uh, as you can see here, you can uh, plug this uh, to one of the Ethernet ports. Uh, and uh, what happens is if you have even multiple uh, adapters like this, you can make a Raspberry Pi as a network uh, router, network bridge and uh, you can do various experiments okay so you don't need to rely on uh, something like this see mini pc uh, pc with uh, dual ethernet something like this you will get our uh, fanless pc things like that fanless yes something like this see uh, you will get something like this um, which is quite okay right see even this is not expensive and uh, this is x86 based so it is highly versatile but if you want it for a device like raspberry pi you can consider uh, some setup like this okay see i can show you a very quick demo so this you can emulate uh, more or less like a console port of a network appliance see if you buy any cisco uh, cisco manageable switch right something like that you can see often uh, these switches will have a dedicated console port and the console port where you can set its IP address see something like this and uh, it will have a dedicated uh, console port and uh, these console ports may also have UI uh, remote uh, uh, you know web UI access and stuff see there are various brands if not uh, Cisco you can also find uh, I found uh, uh, sometime uh, while ago in this uh, TP link as well see and they have this uh, dedicated console port see this is the console port where you can set its uh, ip and then you can access remotely via its ua or you know command line access and the rest of the ports are the switch service ports uh, uh, their uh, work is to you know uh, make the switch work like any other switch and of course you can create vlans and uh, stp stuff like that uh, all the switch regular stuff you can configure in this manageable switches so that's the point so same thing you can even experiment with the raspberry pi as well even this you can uh, set it as a you know linux switch and uh, 
with the uh, you know kernel uh, bridging it does the same thing as what you get it over here but of course this is not efficient versus something like that is highly efficient because the actual switching and the data plane is on the hardware anyway back to the topic so if you have something like this you can do some setup like this uh, you can have uh, this as a packet generator uh, port uh, versus this port you can uh, configure an ip and then you can set this as your console port uh, so that you can get remote ui access okay so you can see there what uh, we can do is we can quickly connect this ethernet cable uh, to this port let us assume this is our console so we connect to the port which is integrated on the motherboard let me remove this cover and what i can do is i can plug this power and we can boot yes see this has the same uh, pypg image uh, and uh, once it boots uh, the you know entire os should be ready so let me switch the monitor and uh, Yes, uh, you can see there we are inside and uh, let me connect this mouse and keyboard. See this is the reason you should have a very good uh, you know power adapter. I, I am using this official Raspberry Pi power adapter. Do not use uh, just any charger of your smartphone and stuff like that because the moment you populate more and more this uh, USB ports we do not know what could be the power consumption. Okay. Uh, yep. So, you can go to the terminal and if you check. Uh, it is uh, this thing config you can see there uh, it is uh, showing this additional uh, port. So, yeah I am uh, capturing the screen uh, you can see there this is the port uh, in which uh, this uh, ethernet cable is connected. So, this port is the uh, raspberry pi motherboard integrated port other than that we have this additional port. So, what you can do is uh, in the pi pg you can use uh, this port. Uh, uh, as a service port and uh, this uh, you can connect it to, uh, to your test equipment and then you can fire the packets through this port uh, not in this port because you can treat this uh, port as a console port ok. Uh, we just boot inside and after a while it should show in the ports of all this uh, stuff see go to the generic and then you can find the ports. So, if you click after a while it takes time after a while it should show the additional port as well. So, let us just wait couple of minutes because the system have to get that uh, stable configuration. So, once it gets it kind of pulls and then it will populate over here. Yes, I just uh, paused the video feed and then restored uh, after a while uh, I can able to see that extra port over here. So, you can see there it will uh, just get populated. Uh, uh, by itself uh, uh, the thing is after you freshly boot the system it will take a while because I, I just set a sort of a timer so that the system gets a stable configuration then it does all this you know background tasks. So, you can see there uh, in this case uh, what we, we can do is we can set this port uh, as it is uh, you know packet generation uh, port so that we do not use this uh, port which is the console port. Uh, if we treat this as the console port, so which is the ETH 0. So, we can set as uh, ETH 1 and then we can save and uh, we can start testing it out ok. So, you can see there the port is selected. Uh, I have done some few fixes and also added some few features, but I have not updated on this this uh, SD card because I am doing it on a, a different uh, SD card which is I am doing the current build of this project. So, you can see there I set the count and all and what we do is we can do a quick wireshark sudo wireshark yeah since it is capturing the packets it is little bit pretty much overloaded uh, which is still uh, ok. Yes, see you can capture in this uh, port. So, so, we can select this uh, service port uh, which is ETH1 because that is the port we selected to send packets. So, 
So, we test it out quickly, we can go anywhere here, layer to slow protocols and then we can send some test packet as you can see there, uh, this port has no uh, IP uh, address assigned and in fact, if it gets through DHCP, uh, you can also turn it off because uh, you know, you just need to send packets, so you do not need to send any other data out of this port. Okay. I am not sure whether it works or not because it is actually, it is not connected to anything. So, I am not sure it may not work. Okay. I can pull one extra ethernet cable and we can do a quick test. Yeah, I have the spare ethernet cable, uh, it has some dust, yep, uh, we can connect it and uh, if it gets an IP, we can disable it. Okay, because we do not need anything like that. Uh, what I can do is I can open another tab and if config, yeah, it is uh, pulling this IP, but of course, you can disable that, that is not an issue. Um, and uh, we can try this send a test OEM packet and we see if the engine is working. Okay, yes. See, you can see there it is, uh, it has sent uh, the PyPG engine have sent the packets. So, that is kind of uh, expected. So, here is the thing, uh, with the if config command, uh, we can uh, remove uh, the IP address and uh, still the interface uh, should uh, be up and uh, working fine because we are just disabling the layer 3 context of that ethernet interface. So, what we can do is sudo, let me increase the font size if possible zoom in, yeah, hope you can see comfortably. So, sudo uh, if config eth1 and then we can reset its IP and we do if config, you should see the IP address is no more set and so the subnet mask and we can uh, go to Wireshark and we can still test whether it all works fine. So, we do a reset of this capture and we start fresh. See, please bear in mind the port is still up, uh, which is technically the driver, uh, whatever the kernel initialized, it is all up and running. Okay, so let me just do a test packet here. I am sending a lacp packet, a bunch of lacp packets. Yep, you can see there it goes. So, the main advantage is if you now do this, it does not send any sort of you know broadcasts much. Uh, unlike before, what you have seen before. So, even this something like this, this is a layer 2, layer 3 multicast, so you can see there, even this we can disable, that is not a big deal. But this is the advantage and also if you send any um, mal formatted packets, if you send any uh, bogus uh, IPv4 frames or uh, some TCP UDP, you know, <laughs> bogus frames, uh, you may get some kind of a, you know, reply from the remote uh, system. Uh, if you are sending a legitimate uh, looking uh, packets and if the remote uh, mission has no uh, TCP or UDP port registered, uh, then you may get, uh, you know, uh, the error reply. So, you can avoid, you know, things like that. This should not respond to anything like that. It's just uh, if it receives, it is still fine. It can receive and it can just uh, discard, okay. So, optionally, I suggest if you want to monitor what is the response, if you are doing some ethical hacking and stuff like that, optionally, of course, you can enable the promiscuous mode. Uh, we can just do here eth1 uh, promisc up yeah, just promise and if you do if config, you can see there it has this uh, driver mode which we have set it as a uh, promise. So, why I am saying that word driver is, see anything you do in if config, it is just uh, got, uh, I mean it is just caught by the kernel and then the kernel passes it to the device driver and the driver passes it uh, onto the hardware and uh, the promiscuous mode is something hardware does that. Okay, So, once you set that, it is going to receive any type of frames and it will be forwarded even the non-matching uh, unicast uh, uh, layer to unicast frames, it is going to send it across. See, there are three things are there. You have the unicast frames, uh, which if it does not match this MAC address, it is going to drop. So, we need to avoid that in this type of situation when you do this. Uh, kind of packet generators or things like that. So, you can optionally enable that promiscuous mode in case if you are curious, what is the reply you get back from that remote device. So, you can enable 
promise cache mode and uh, by default anyway it will get unicast frames uh, anyway it will get a multicast frames so optionally of course you can disable multicast frames as well i have discussed extensively some couple of video episodes on layer 2 multicast and stuff so this is what it is but if you are still new to some of the terms or jargon what i discussed of course you need to learn a uh, still lot about networking i'm not just saying some osa uh, layers and some few basics actually i'm just saying the more in depth of networking basics actually so this is a way you can uh, branch it out in fact if you have some extensive lab you can also have some multiple uh, usb ethernet adapters onto a raspberry pi and then you can uh, selectively do some packet generation and stuff i may add more future features in the future uh, in the pi pg so that you know it kind of makes sense uh, putting all these two things together why i am kind of insisting a, a, you know method like this by not using this see if you notice uh, this is still connected and we have this uh, ip which is still set uh, and uh, by theory if i go to my pc switch back to the pc i should be able to remotely connect it uh, to this uh, raspberry pi so before that as a uh, on a safer side i can do sudo ip table minus f i'm just flushing if it if the firewall is blocking any uh, incoming uh, uh, you know http requests or something it is going to uh, you know it is going to allow them uh, by flushing this ip table rules so maybe it may allow also i just want to switch it back to my pc and i want to test so let me stop this capture and what we do is um, yeah we can switch it back to the pc and we can access that ip yes so we are back here what we do is we type its ip 192.168 it is 153 yep you can see there uh, we can access the ui here so this way it gives a great comfort because you never need to put any uh, you know um, keyboard mouse and stuff like that even monitor and uh, you, you know use the raspberry pi you can straight away use something like this and you can see there okay you can directly use like this and you can do anything you want and in fact we can uh, do a test packet and see that if it comes over here okay it is uh, sudo wireshark and we fire a test unicast so that uh, you know this pc gets it uh, yeah we get it over here and then we go back and then we go to the settings ethernet settings of course i need to set my pc's uh, mac address uh which is this file open tab if config see there fcaa14 something so this should be my destination mac and uh, source mac is fine it is picking that other nicards mac address or something that is fine and i can fire a test ip before uh, packet with this ethernet frame settings okay so we see if we can get something like that yeah 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 you can see there i am getting this uh, frames uh, these are coming from the you know uh, packet generator you can see there so this is from here this is from here uh, i think 34c oo which is the mac address uh, source mac address is this uh, this is the one and uh, length is 92 so it should be this i have to check see 118 113 uh, let's check what is the ip before settings yeah 113 and this seems to be fine uh, 565560 this seems to be fine uh, i need to see why the source mac address uh, it is picking up this okay uh, which is uh, this 34 c 00 something like that Uh, which is this ah yeah because uh, i think it sent to the uh, switch no no it doesn't happen because if it sends it should come directly over there uh, via switch it doesn't need to go to the router okay it should be almost like a this thing i can just do one thing i can set some bogus mac address something like this should not matter and uh, we send a test uh, say tcp 
packet we see what we get here yeah let me do the capture again and uh, if that has already sent before i can do one more time that yes you can see there we got it uh, over here and uh, by some reason it is uh, getting this uh, mac address which is uh, this uh, xiaomi uh, router uh, which i got so i need to check what it is the re what could be the reason but uh, in general which is why i said in the first uh, uh, you know uh, previous episode about introduction video of 5pg it's always advisable that you can uh, run a isolated uh, cable from this to your test equipment uh, rather than interfering with any uh, routers and uh, your entire full fledged corporate network or home network also so you can almost have a topology always something like this you have this packet generator and you have your test laptop or your test device you can have a dedicated cable like this if required you can put some network switch in between so that you can connect these two and uh, when it comes to console you can connect this console port uh, to your router okay so that way it is uh, having you can connect it to your router so that way you can get uh, the access of this packet generator from anywhere and then this is treated like a separate channel and then you can do your test and uh, other experiments and even in laptop you can use this type of usb uh, ethernet to uh, i mean usb to ethernet adapter and what you can do is that you can use here and the default laptops uh, ethernet port you can connect it uh, to your uh, existing ip network something like this okay so we are some sort of a switch of course okay something like that you can do it okay so hope um, this gives a more broader perspective so i suggest if anyone is serious enough uh, to build some test uh, network lab setup or something consider getting bunch of this not just one not just two maybe just bunch of this you can do various scenarios and it will be quite useful so if you have anything to discuss uh, be in touch via mail or post your queries in youtube comments thanks a lot for joining me stay tuned have a nice day bye bye